starter. I like to thank you everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar 3D open source scanner for containers image, just alone and, and run. I'm Paul Simon, Solution Engineer, Cloud Native Leader for, at Oracle and CNCF Ambassador. I will be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Teipei Fukuda, Open Source Engineer at Aqua Secured. And a few housekeeping uh, items before we get started. During the webinar, we are not able to talk, talk as a, an attendee. And this is, uh, and our our presentation today is so long, so our QA will answer on our blog, right? Uh, this is an official webinar of the CNCF, and as such, is, is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to that to the chat or questions that will be in violation of the code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and the slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at www.cncf.io uh, uh, slash, uh, slash webinars. With that, they all in hand, it over to Tepe to kick off today's presentation. Tepe, this is with you. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction, Paulo. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tepe Fukuda from the open source team uh, in Aqua Security. Uh, today, I'll be talking about Trivi, uh, which is a vulnerability, contain vulnerability scanner for container images. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, so today uh, I'll cover these contents. Uh, first of all, I'll be speaking a little bit about uh, what's vulnerability, why is a vulnerability scanner necessary, uh, because I think some users are not familiar with uh, vulnerability. So I just have a quick introduction. After that, I'll introduce Trivi and explain basic features, advanced features, and the new features we recently released. And first of all, what is a vulnerability? So according to Wikipedia, a vulnerability is a weakness which can be exploited by a threat actor, such as an attacker, to perform an unauthorized action within a computer system. And there are a lot of software vulnerabilities such as Meltdown, Shellshock, Heartbreed, and Dirty Car. Heartbreed affected OpenSSL and Dirty Car affected Linux kernel and so on. You need to know whether these vulnerabilities affect your environment. If these affect you, you have to deal with it immediately. If you don't do this, the attacker can exploit your system. And the most famous vulnerability ID is a CVE ID, which is managed and assigned by MITRE. Uh, NVD, a National Vulnerability Database, lists all vulnerabilities assigned CVE ID. Uh, if you want to know the detail about the vulnerability, you can visit NVD and search CVE ID. Uh, now, I'd like to look at an example of Heartbreed. This vulnerability affects OpenSSL and is assigned CVE 2014-160. This affected the latest version at the time. What is important here? That your system will be vulnerable suddenly, even if you have changed nothing. There are two types of vulnerabilities. The first one is known vulnerabilities which are assigned the vulnerability ID, such as CVE ID, I explained. The second one is unknown vulnerabilities, which are not disclosed yet. And there are two types of scanners corresponding to the type of vulnerability. 
The first one is a scanner identifying components with known vulnerabilities, such as Truby, uh, I'm explaining now, and Clear or Aqua. The second is a scanner detecting unknown vulnerabilities. So the vulnerability scanner for web application detects the vulnerabilities your application has. Those vulnerabilities are not widely known to the public. And the fuzzing tool also detects unknown vulnerabilities such as buffer overflow and DOS and so on. If you find a vulnerability in open source by using the fuzzing tool and report it, the vulnerability after that uh, becomes known vulnerability at the time. So Truby checks if known vulnerabilities affect your environment. So the target is uh, known vulnerabilities. Uh, so we have to prevent a container, including vulnerability, vulnerable packages, from deploying to our environment. The good solution is to scan a container image stored in an image registry, container registry. So it's called shift left. As shown here, shift left means we should identify security issues at an early stage. So for this purpose, you can use a vulnerability scanner. According to Wikipedia, a vulnerability scanner is a computer program designed to assess computers, computer systems, networks, or applications for known weakness. Okay, so how can we identify image vulnerabilities? First, we identify the packages and the versions in the image. Next, we cross-reference them with the vulnerability database. It sounds easy, but unfortunately, there are a lot of Linux distributions in the world, such as Red Hat, Debian, Ubuntu, and Amazon Linux, and so on. So they provide a different share in its system and the package manager. So we need a different implementations for each distribution. And uh, in addition, uh, vendor backport security fixes. For example, uh, OpenSSL in the upstream updated the version to 1.0.1 .1, and it fixes a certain vulnerability. But OpenSSL in Red Hat doesn't use the version as is. They backported the security patch to 1.0.0.2 EL7. Debian backported it to 100-dev9u1. So they fixed the same vulnerability with a different version. So we have to fetch security advisories from each vendor. Okay, so this is uh, today's main topic. I'll talk about Trivi. Uh, I developed Trivi as my hobby on a long vacation last year. Uh, eventually, the Acro Security came across Trivi and offered me the position within their company. So I decided to take up a great opportunity to join this awesome company, Acro Security. And this is why Trivi and I are here. All right, so let's move on. As I said, Trivi is an open source scanner for container images. It is hosted under the Accor Security Organization and developed in 2019. So it's been around one year, so it's still a young project. It got 4,000 stars on GitHub so far. As you can see in README, uh, Truby has six main features. So let me explain them. Okay, so the first one is about the type of vulnerabilities Truby can detect. How does software get into a server? I think there are three types. The first one is be a system package manager, such as YARM and apt-get. The second one is be an application package manager, such as NPM and Bundler. And the last one is self-installation, like installing by make or downloading the binary and put it to the proper path manually. Truby supports the first and second one. Actually, most scanners support only either one, so this is the advantage of Truby. 
Okay, so to be support uh, first one and second one. Uh, as for system package manager, apt, yam, apk are supported. Besides, it supports application package manager such as Bandura, Composer, PicM, Poetry, NPM, and so on. So we support uh, many types of package managers. And uh, the supported OSCs are listed here. Truby supports a wide variety of OSCs, including Amazon, Oracle, Suzy Linux, and Photon OS. But we don't support Fedora and Windows. We have received requests from many users to support Windows, so we are considering it. But for now, we don't support it. And you can install Trivi easily. So when you use Red Hat or CentOS, you can install Trivi with three commands. Let me show the demo. Okay, so this is uh, CentOS 7. And at first, you have to configure the uh, Trivi repository. Okay, so I already set up. So, so you have to specify the URL to download Trivi binary. Okay, after setting up, you update the uh, index. And now you can install Trivi uh, through yam. Uh, sorry, uh, yam install. Now the latest version 0 0.9 is installing and yeah, they're finished. So now we are ready to use Trivi. So it's simple. So, and of course you install the Trivi through yam. So you can update uh, Trivi through yam like the other packages. Okay, so it's very simple. Going back to the slide. And okay, so if you use Mac OS, just run blue install or security Trivi uh, Of course, it's easy to install on Debian, Ubuntu, and other OSs as well. Also, you can take advantage of the install script. The install script downloads the Trivi binary based on your OS and architecture. So you don't have to care about OS and the architecture you are using. So you can install Trivi with one line, regardless of your environment. Okay, so let's try it. Uh, this is uh, Alpine, Alpine 3.11. And so, okay, let me copy the one-liner. Okay, so this is uh, just a download uh, install script from GitHub and execute it, right. Okay, now it's checking GitHub the latest tab and uh, it found 0 0.9.0. This is the latest version and uh, uh, the binary was installed. So now you can use uh, Trivi. So it's very simple. So actually, the, this shell script detects uh, Linux and 64-bit. So the, this script downloads the binary according to the environment. All right. OK, so the next. Uh, Trivi is so simple and fast. Take a look. Uh, after installation, all you have to do is to specify an image name that you want to scan. Okay, so that's it. So let me show the demo again. Uh, so to be minus help. So you have the subcommand image. Okay, so to be image. Okay, this is a usage and the Trivi image and image name. So the option you have to specify at least is only image name, okay? So for example, Alpine 3.10.2, 
scanning this image. Okay, finished. So Tribi detects some vulnerabilities regarding OpenSSL. And uh, yes, of course, this image is Alpine 3.10.2. Yeah, that's it. So it's so simple to use. All right. And uh, of course, uh, now I scanned Alpine 3.10, which is an official image. But uh, of course, you can scan your custom image like Alpha Security Tribi or anything uh, you built in your local or uh, you pushed to the registry. Okay, so it usually takes a while to download vulnerability information on the first run. Since it needs to download the data from NVD, Red Hat, Debian, and so on. So as I explained before, we have to download the security advisory from each vendor. Also, uh, some of them don't provide a stable and fast API because it's not supposed to be called frequently. In my experience, it takes about 30 minutes or an hour. But it is not the case for Trivi. When you don't specify any option, Trivi downloads the full database by default. It finishes within 10 seconds, even on the first run. When you specify minus minus right option, Trivi downloads the right database, which, do, which doesn't include the details such as description and the references because uh, Truby is supposed to be run uh, on CICD. So uh, some user actually needs uh, only CBID and the civility because they can search the CBID on NBD website and uh, know the detail. So for such a user, I recommend using minus minus light option. Actually, it takes a few seconds on the first run. Okay, let's try it. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Alpine and all the Trivi is installed. All right, so just specify minus minus right and Alpine 3.10.2. Okay, so now it downloads the database, but as you can see, it's only four or five megabytes. So it takes a few sec only in a few seconds to download this database. And after that, uh, it takes a few seconds to download the image Alpine 3.10, but uh, the entire process is, uh, has finished within uh, five or I don't know, but a few seconds. Uh, as you can see, so the, this result doesn't include the description. So just uh, CV ID and package name and severity. But as I said, you can search the detail uh, on the NVD website with this vulnerability ID. So it's pretty fast. All right. And so in a normal way, the scanner needs to download data from each source. Unfortunately, they are not stable and slow, as I mentioned earlier, and duplicated. For example, NVD has a description like uh, this is a denial of service in NGX. Uh, probably Red Hat, Ubuntu, and other vendors have a similar description for the same vulnerability. But such duplicated information is not necessary for users. So they have duplication and are not efficient. So why is Truby so fast? because Truby doesn't download data directly. The script on GitHub Action downloads all security advisories from vendor. Then it removes deprecation and uh, build database on GitHub Actions every 12 hours. Actually, the NVD has all vulnerabilities that CVID is assigned to, it means it includes vulnerabilities uh, not related to containers, such as IoT and iPhone or uh, Android. So this process removes those data as well. 
After that, GitHub Actions uploads the database to GitHub release. At last, just uh, to be just downloads the database from GitHub release and use it. So this database is optimized and hosted on the GitHub, which is stable enough compared to the vendor APIs. Uh, also, it's echo for vendor APIs since Truby calls these APIs only once every 12 hours. Uh, in a normal way, the scanner downloads the data through vendor APIs directly. So the, if there are a lot of users, uh, they call many times, so vendor APIs. Okay, so as you can see, so these database files, uh, Truby write db.gz, db.gz, uh, uploaded by GitHub Actions. The light, light database file is uh, four or five megabyte. And the uh, full database is about uh, 17 megabyte. So it's small enough. And Turby uses Bolt DB, which is a single file database and embedded key value database. So Turby can use this database file after downloading it without any setup like relational database such as MySQL. So you just download the database and load it into the memory. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you don't need any setup in advance. Okay, so Truby detects vulnerability with a high degree of accuracy. For example, Many open source scanners depend on Alpine 6 DB on GitHub to detect vulnerabilities uh, in Alpine Linux. However, the purpose of this database is to make it possible to know what packages have backported fixes. If Alpine maintainers don't backport a fix and just update the version, the vulnerability is not listed in this repository. So this database, this repository, doesn't have all vulnerabilities regarding Alpine Linux. Also, as you can see, this repository is uh, not updated frequently. Four months ago, is too old for a vulnerability scanner. In other words, the vulnerabilities disclosed within four months are not detected by scanners de depending on this database. So as for Trivi, in addition to Alpine Sec SecDB, so we close the Alpine Linux package repository as well. Uh, this repository is uh, hosted on GitLab and contains uh, APK build files for each and every Alpine Linux package along with the required patches and the scripts, if any. It includes security fixes, of course. For example, this request fixes a vulnerability in JSON C, uh, CVE 2020-12762. Uh, this request was opened and merged five days ago, so it's uh, really fresh. As you can see in the Git diff, the difference is the line of package release. Package release was updated from zero to one. It means 0 0.14.1 fixes this vulnerability. In other words, 0 0.14.0 or less is vulnerable to this, this vulnerability. Now we can detect this vulnerability in Alpine Linux because we already have the, all the information we need to detect the vulnerabilities. Okay, so if you wanna know more about accuracy, you can read the blog comparing Claire, Anchor, and Trivi published by Boxbot. In this blog, Claire and Anchor didn't detect any vulnerability for Alpine latest, while Trivi did. You may have wondered why there is such a difference before this presentation, but uh, you already know the reason.
Okay. And uh, we use uh, multiple data sources for each programming language uh, for the vulnerability detection of the library, such as NPM and Composer. Uh, the important thing is that these databases are not a subset of each other. For example, Friends of PHP, so and actually the security advisor is fr from Friends of PHP, has a vulnerability which GitHub advisory database doesn't have. The opposite is also true. In short, using both databases should improve accuracy. So yesterday we released version 0.9.0 supporting GitHub advisory database as well. So before we supported only the one database for each language. And this feature was implemented by Masahiro331, so who is not a member of Aqua. So I want to thank you for the great contribution here. And Truby is uh, suitable for DevSecOps. You can use Truby in CI/CD easily. In this example of Truby CI, uh, we have two lines. The second line has exit code one and uh, severity critical options. It means it will fail. It will fail the test if your image has a critical vulnerability. On the, on the other hand, even if your image has a vulnerability with high severity, the first line, uh, the, the test will pass. Uh, but the vulnerabilities will be displayed. So because uh, we specified uh, exit code zero, so even if we find the vulnerability, it will not fail. And of course, you can use it. Uh, uh, you can use it with other uh, CI/CD tools such as Circle CI and Jenkins and so on. Uh, we have GitHub Action in GitHub Marketplace, but it's still experimental and uh, doesn't have so many options. Uh, on the other hand, Azure also provides GitHub Action using Truby. Uh, it's uh, also the pre-release but uh, it's easy to use and flexible. Uh, to be honest, it is better to use this guitar action rather than ours for now. Uh, but we are working on the official GitHub ac action, so it should be getting better. So I hope that our official GitHub action is better than Azure One. Okay, so we also provide uh, GitHub integration. We provide a template for GitLab, so all you need to do is include the template and use it. So it's around uh, five or six lines. And you can see the result on the GitLab dashboard. This was added by yeah, non aqua members, so I'm really grateful to them. Thank you for the community. Okay, so Truby supports multiple formats. At first, Truby can scan an image in a container registry, such as Docker Hub and Harbor. Next, Truby supports an image in Docker Engine. Usually, Docker Engine is running as a daemon in your machine, so you can scan your local image. Then, uh, you can use a tau file exported by docker save. And finally, the Truby can scan Kaniko image and OCI image. Okay, so I'll show the demo about uh, scanning OCI image format. Uh, okay, so in this example, in this demo, I'm using the Scopio from Red Hat. This is a CRI tool converting the image format. Uh, for example, you can download the image from Docker registry and uh, save it to the local Docker engine. Or uh, you can extract the image from Docker engine and export it as an OCI image format. Okay, so this time uh, I copied from, I'm copying from the 
Dukkha uh, Ha, Arpine 3.10.2 to the OCI image. To slash uh, Arpine. Okay, now Scorpio is getting image from the Dukkha Ha and uh, export it, it uh, as an OCI image format. Okay, now we can see the Dukkha image. Uh, OCI image format in the local in the local machine, and to be can scan this directory uh, directory. So to be image and uh, minus minus include and dot slash alpine. So uh, if you scan an image in Docker registry or a Docker engine, you don't need an input option. You just specify like this. But uh, if you want to scan the local file or a directory, you have to specify the input option like this. Okay. Okay, that's it. So uh, you can see the Alpine 3.102 and uh, dot slash Alpine. And also some vulnerabilities are detected. So we can scan OCI image format in the local file system. All right. Going back to the slide. And for more details, uh, visit our uh, readme. You can see the more detail. Okay, I explained the basic features of Trivi. So this section describes the advanced features. The first one is the client server mode. Uh, there are client and server. You have to run two processes, but you can use the same binary with client and server subcommands. I'll show you it uh, later. And first of all, a server downloads vulnerability database from GitHub releases. So this database is built on GitHub Actions every 12 hours. And this is supposed to be done before scanning an image. And after that, Truby server downloads a database automatically uh, every 12 hours. Next, a client pulls layers from a container registry such as Docker Hub. Then the client analyzes the layers and extract OS and package information. And the client sends the information to the server. Actually, this information including the OS and the package, uh, package name and package versions. And uh, the server stores the information in the cache for each layer. At last, the server responds, uh, the server detects vulnerabilities uh, on the server side based on the information sent from the client and the server responds the vulnerabilities to the client. Okay. So I'll show you the demo. At first, you have to run the Truby server. Okay, now the server is listening at uh, 49.54. Okay, then you go to the uh, client and actually Truby has a subcommand client on the server. So specify to the client and the image name like this. Okay, so it works uh, uh, as a standalone mode, but uh, you can see the log in, in the server. So the server sets detecting Alpine vulnerabilities. So to be client doesn't detect the vulnerabilities, just send the information of this image. And uh, on the server side, the server detects vulnerabilities and uh, returns the result to the client. And uh, the client just displays the result we got from the server. All right, so uh, of course you can specify the port uh, listen, zero, 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 and 
10,080. Okay, as you can see, the server is listening uh, 10,080. And you have to specify uh, the remote option. So HTTP and local host, uh, 10,080. And of course, you can specify the remote host. So in this case, I'm using the local host, but uh, you can use a global IP address or private IP address on the different host. And uh, Alpine 3.9.2. Okay, so uh, it's very fast. Uh, okay, so yes, also the this server sets uh, detecting Alpine vulnerabilities. All right. So, okay, so what is the advantage of the client server mode? Imagine that uh, there is a image one based on Alpine 3.11, and it has one layer in storing bash. Let me call the first line layer A and the second line layer B. Uh, let's think about scanning image one by client A. At first, client A pulls layer A and B from the container registry and analyzes them. And after that, it sends those layer information to a server. The server stores them in the cache. Next, there is an image two based on image one. It has the same layers as image one. Uh, as you can see, the first and the second line are the same as image one from Alpine 3.11 and uh, install the bash. So, but in addition, it has another layer installing the car, CURL. Let's call this layer, this, this line layer C. Uh, if you want to scan the image two on the client B, uh, what's gonna happen? The server already has the information regarding layer A and B. So the server tells the client that the server already has data about A and B. So uh, it allows client B to skip downloading layer A and B. It just needs to pull only data C and analyze it. And at last, client B sends the information to the server. And uh, vulnerabilities will be detected on the server side. Uh, of course, the information of layer A and B are extracted from the cache. So, if you have multiple Truby clients on different hosts, you can reduce network cost and execution time with client server mode because the cache is shared between all clients. It is useful if you run Truby as a cron job on multiple hosts or you have own CI pipeline on your server. In that case, you can launch Truby server as a demo and uh, run to be client in each CI job. All right, uh, next advanced feature is integration with open policy agent. Uh, I was supposed to give a presentation and publish this feature in KubeCon Europe uh, 2020 uh, in March, but you know, it has been postponed to August. So this feature is not released yet, but let me introduce a little. We are gonna provide two integrations, standalone integration and Kubernetes integration. Today, you can filter vulnerabilities uh, to be detected uh, with severity. For example, you can display only critical vulnerabilities with a severity option, but you can't apply a complicated rule to the result. For example, uh, in your environment, you can accept DOS in Bash because Bash is not exported to the internet. While 
you can't accept those in ngx because uh, if the ngx is down that your website cannot be accessed so this integration allows you to filter vulnerabilities using rego it means you can you can apply a complicated rule uh, as for kubernetes integration let me explain the overview and for more details, please join my presentation in Kubecon Europe in August. Okay, this is the architecture of the Kubernetes integration. As shown in the figure, you have to deploy Truby Enforcer and the Kube Management developed by OPA team in your Kubernetes cluster. Then you scan some images by Truby and register the results as custom resources in advance. Also, you need to upload a Rego to filter vulnerabilities as config map. Uh, cube management watches the config map and uh, loads Rego from a config map into OPA automatically. Okay, so we are ready to deploy a container image. So you apply Kubernetes YAML, including deployment, demo set, or resources having an image. When applying your YAML, Admission Controller sends Admission Review to Truby Enforcer. Then Truby Enforcer gets vulnerabilities from custom resources. Uh, and ask OPA whether these vulnerabilities can be accepted or not. If OPA doesn't accept those vulnerabilities according to regular rule, you upload it. For example, the, the image has critical vulnerability. Uh, in that case, Tribi rejects uh, deploying the image. So returns uh, deny to the admission controller. So if you try to deploy a vulnerable image, to be enforcer rejects it and it fails to deploy. Okay, this is the overview of Kubernetes integration. Uh, recently, we released significant new features. I'll talk about them. Uh, this is not a feature of Truby, but uh, let me mention it here. Harbor, which is a famous open source registry, uh, ships to be as a default scanner uh, for more details uh, from version 2.0. For more details, you can read the blog and the CNC webinar from the Harbor team. Also, this is not a feature of Truby, but this week we released a new project, Starboard. Starboard integrates existing Kubernetes tools, not just from Aqua, but also from third party projects into the Kubernetes experience. Starboard enables results from vulnerability scanners, workload auditors, and configuration benchmark tests to be incorporated into Kubernetes CRDs, custom resource definitions. And from there, accessed through the Kubernetes API. Of course, Starboard's, Starboard uh, uses Truby internally. Uh, users familiar with Cube Control or uh, with a dashboard to like Octant can find security risk, informa security risk information at their fingertips. And uh, for more details, you can read our blog or uh, read me or it's tabled. Uh, from version 0.5.3, Truby shows which layer the vulnerability comes from. For example, this vulnerability is uh, introduced by this layer. This vulnerability is added in this layer. Uh, this vulnerability is uh, this vulnerability comes from this layer, like this. So you can know which layer you have to fix. Uh, for now, you can't see the visualized result because Truby is a CLI, and Truby just displays a digest and diff ID in the result JSON. Uh, not table format. So if you want to know the uh, digest and diff ID, you should export the result as JSON. And a digest is a hash 
of the compressed layer, while uh, diff ID is the hash of the uncompressed layer. Uh, Docker engine stores uncompressed layer. So if you don't see, uh, so you don't see a digest in the result JSON, if you scan your local image, uh, you see the digest as, as well when scanning an image in the container registry because the uh, compressed layer is stored in the container registry. <clears throat> At the beginning, I said Truby is an open source scanner for container images, but it is wrong now. In the latest version, Truby became open source scanner for artifacts. Okay, let me explain. From version 0 0.9.0, uh, we released yesterday, Truby can scan the file system such as a host machine, a virtual machine, or uh, an unpacked container image file system. Uh, if you specify the path to your project with file system or FS subcommon, Truby will look for vulnerabilities based on lock files, such as gem file lock and package lock JSON. Okay, I'll show the demo. And okay, so now we have the Truby, and uh, Truby has a subcommand uh, file system or FS. And now I have the project in this directory. Uh, this, this project includes a pip file log, pip file log. So this is uh, written in Python. Okay, scan this project with uh, FS subcommand. Okay, that's it. Uh, one second. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's happening now. It doesn't work. I don't know why, but uh, so I have the video in such a this case. Okay, one second. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a bit small, but uh, I hope it works. Uh, okay, this is a project directory including pip file lock and the scan the Truby file system with a uh, directory. Okay, so you can see the vulnerabilities. And of course you can filter the vulnerabilities by severity like this. So in this case, the pip file rock has uh, two high vulnerabilities. Okay. So now uh, we can scan the file system. Uh, and also, we can scan your container from inside the container. All you need to do is log into a container and run Truby with fs slash. Uh, in the previous example, we specified the path to the project, but uh, in this example, we specify slash. This is the only difference. Uh, if you want to scan an entire container, you specify slash. If you want to scan your project only, you, spec you specify the path to your project. Uh, okay, so I'll try the demo. Hopefully it works this time. Uh, okay, so this is uh, inside a container, Alpine 3.10. Okay, so to the FS and slash. Okay, it works. So, as you can see, this is uh, Alpine 3.10, and the host name is 619, blah, blah. Yeah, that's host name. Yes, this image. So you can scan the container inside from inside the container. Okay. And next, uh, 
as mentioned earlier, you can scan not only a container, but also a host machine and a virtual machine. Note that Tribbit traverses uh, all files and the root directory if you specify slash. When you have a lot of files in your machine, it takes a few minutes or more, so be careful. Oops. And in addition, you can scan your image as part of the build process by embedding Trivi in the Docker file. Uh, maybe uh, it's easy to understand to see the demo. Okay. So I have a Docker file in this directory. Uh, okay, this image is based on Alpine 3.7. At first, we install the dependency and install Trivi and scan uh, with slash. And also we specify the exit code one. So if this image has a vulnerability, this line will fail. And at the same time, uh, of course, the Docker build also fails. Okay, let's try. Uh, so I didn't aggregate uh, these instructions because I wanted to use the cache for the shortcut. But uh, in the production production environment, you should aggregate uh, instructions to reduce the image size. And also you should remove the cache of Trivi and uh, remove the Trivi binary after uh, scanning uh, for the image size. Okay, do a build. Uh, dot. Okay. Okay, it finished. So, as you can see, the this line failed, and uh, this took a build failed with uh, uh, exit code one. So, because uh, this image has one vulnerability, so you can scan the image uh, in the Docker file. Okay, so this approach can be used to update Docker files currently using Aqua's micro scanner. Okay, uh, at last, Trivi scans a remote git repository with repository or a repo subcommand, uh, specifying a repository URL uh, on the repository into your local machine and uh, scan it. Okay, I also show the uh, Demo. Okay. At first, the Trivi has a subcommand repository or a repo. So, uh, repo help. So, the option you have to specify at least uh, is a repository URL you want to scan. Maybe repo, HTTPS, uh, github.com, aqua security, CI test. So this repository uh, includes uh, multiple log files and uh, also they have some vulnerabilities. So you can scan a remote get repository by the repo sub command. I hope it works, but uh, okay, so maybe it's something wrong. So, okay, I recorded the video just in case. Ah, sorry, I didn't uh, record this video. So, uh, I don't know why it doesn't work, but sorry. Uh, so, anyway, uh, this repository sub command downloads uh, Git repository into your local machine and scan it. Okay, actually, the, uh, okay, so now it supports uh, only in a public repository. For example, you are considering using a certain tool, but uh, you want to know this tool has a critical vulnerability or not before using it. Uh, this feature is useful in that case. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. 
their GitHub issues, Twitter, email, and CNCF Slack. We don't have a channel in CNCF Slack, but uh, our members are there. Uh, Liz Lies and me and Sima. So you can send us a direct message. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, hopefully my presentation is useful for someone. And uh, I hope that everything is going well uh, to you uh, in this serial situation. Thanks. Thank you, Tempe, for a great presentation. I learned a lot with you. And uh, I will see you again because I, I should learn much more. A very large and great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, as I said, uh, we don't have time enough to, to key away, live key away, but uh, the question will be answered on our blog, right? Uh, thank you everyone for this moment, for joining us today. The webinar recording and slide will be available later today. Uh, we are looking forward to see you at future CNCF webinar. Have a great day. Thank you so much.